In the springtime, spruce trees like this one grow brightly covered tips at the end of their branches known simply as spruce tips. This new growth has a citrus and pine-like aroma and can be used to make spruce tip syrup, ice cream, cookies, and a billion other things. I, of course, am going to make some beer. I'm looking for the youngest spruce tips I can find. The best ones have just emerged from their papery covering and they're gonna be within reach at the bottom of the tree. If you have to bust out a ladder, it could be a sign that the tree is older and the tips might not have the best flavor. It's a little too early in the season to find a commercial example of a spruce tip IPA, so I grabbed something similar, but definitely different. The goal of beers like this is to skew the hop profile in a specific direction. In this case, they're using hemp hearts to emphasize the dank quality of the hops, and in our case, we'll be using spruce tips to emphasize the pine-like quality of our hops. I think this goes without saying, but adding forage botanicals to your beer introduces some risk and I'm not totally sure how this will turn out. But who knows, maybe we'll learn something. Now, let's make some beer. My strike water heats up, I'm adjusting the water profile for this beer using gypsum, calcium chloride, and a little lactic acid. While this step isn't necessarily required to make good beer, it definitely helps, especially if you want to make something great. For this beer, I'm using about 50% pilsner, 13% white wheat, 22% flaked oats, 6% golden naked oats, 6% flaked corn, and 3% rice hulls. For the mash schedule, I'm going with a single infusion at 154 degrees Fahrenheit or 68 degrees Celsius, so I have my Anvil Foundry brew system set to 162 for mashing. Let's get this thing going. Okay, now that we're mashed in and everything is nice and saturated, it's time to add some spruce tips. I'm adding a quarter pound of spruce tips straight into the grain bed and our one hour mash timer starts now. Time to yank these grains and get our boil started. Now that our basket is up and out of the wort, I need to sparge with about a gallon of water from my gigawort. hectic there at the end, but I think we're good to go. Let's crank this thing to full blast.
We're halfway through our boil and it's time for our next addition. Here's three and a half grams of Chinook and another quarter pound of spruce tips. Okay, we've got about five minutes left in the boil and it's time for another addition. I'm adding five grams of Centennial, five grams of Citra, and five grams of Simcoe. I'm also adding a full pound of spruce tips. And this is about the time I realized I should have had the grain basket in there to hold all of these spruce tips. There are so many spruce tips in there and I'm not even done yet. That's the end of the boil, so I'm killing the heat and adding our final additions. Here's 14 grams of Simcoe, 14 grams of Centennial, and two ounces of Citra. I'm also adding three and a half pounds of spruce tips. Let this hang out with the heat off for about 30 minutes. And just like that, we're ready to chill. Once we're cooled down and in the fermenter, I'll pitch the yeast. I'm going with S33 and SO4 from Fermentis and a fermentation temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. I'll be honest, I had a hell of a time draining that into the fermenter with all those damn spruce tips in there. Next time, I'm definitely using the grain basket to keep them all contained. That said, everything went pretty smoothly and I'm stoked to see how this experiment turns out. We've got two dry hop additions and probably about two weeks to go. More to come. If you like this video, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon. Thank you.